Okay, now we're going to move on to working with our wooden beads. What I've done while I was away was take the sponge that we were using to cover the surface of the canvas and I turned it over to a side I wasn't using, but if the paint's dry on the other side you could use that too. And then I dabbed my finger in the contrasting peach metallic and wiped it across the surface of the sponge. Now why did I do that? Because it makes it much easier for me to just take one of these little wooden beads and roll it around on the sponge and get some paint coverage on there. It doesn't have to be solidly covered. Just give it a little accent color because we're going to go back over it with a little bit of glitter paste in a little while and give it a little bit more color. So there's some peachy ones, and then I'm going to switch back over and create some green ones in a second. So now we're going to go to another side of this. We'll just grab some of this green on our finger, and we'll put it all over the sponge. And then we'll roll our beads around in the green. This is messy, but it, clean, it just covers the beads so much easier that we're going to set aside and let dry until we come back and put some glitter paste on them. Now we have our canvas base with textural lace and paint all completed. We're waiting for the elements that we're going to put on it to be created and we have our beads that we did um, in the last little segment which are just paint and glitter paste and we're just waiting for those to dry and now we have a new fun and exciting tool to show you to make those little flowers that you saw on the finished piece from earlier. So what they are are little flower cutters and plunger sets. So basically it's a cookie cutter type design that with a plunger that pushes your clay element out. The easiest way to explain it is to show you this is a piece of Sculpey, Super Sculpey in white. You are going to want to roll it out. So you can either use a pasta style clay roller or a handheld clay roller like a rolling pin. But you need to get it even and flat and to a reasonably thin thickness. You can see this is probably about a sixteenth of an inch. It can be thicker than that. It's up to you. But the elements that we're about to use are more um, have a little more detail in them if they're a little thinner. So this is the sunflower plunger. So let me show you how these cutters work. You'll take the cutter, much like a cookie cutter, press it down and plunger to get the veining and all the details into the flower. Lift the plunger back up. Lift your co cookie cutter off of your surface carefully because sometimes they stick in that little cutter and if that's true just push the plunger again to push it out. And now you can see that your daisy has been cut perfectly out of that clay. You can lift the clay backing away from it or you can try to pick up your flower separately from the center of the clay. Whichever way works for you is fine. And Now you have a little flower and you just separate. I did this on a little plastic baggie because it's easier to just fold it and separate it and get it off there without breaking any petals. And there's your little petal. Now, you can then bake this by manufacturer instructions. Um, I like to use a little tool or so to sort of curl it up so in nature it looks like those little petals are reaching for the sun. And it's going to end up sitting up like so and give it even more dimension on the finished product when I put that in the oven and bake it that way because this is polymer clay. So the other thing is take a little piece of clay like so, maybe this much or this much, depends on the, the um, beads, how you're going to use your beads or choose to use them. Once and I roll that in a ball and we'll like press this. that into the little ball of clay, take it back off and that's going to become the base. 
you can see that it's going to become the base I'm using to glue my bead stacks down on the canvas with. So I'm going to bake that right along with my so flour. I cut a bunch of these out earlier and I have already baked them so let's just move forward with the painting of our little elements because we want to give them color so they look like actual flowers. And let's just take a little daisy double set that I made. This is a daisy made from the cutters and I just cut two and I stuck them together before I put them in to bake them. So now they stand up with dimension and they will do so once they're on my actual canvas. So let's give those a little color. Um, I'm going to go with a I think I'm going to go with a totally peach flower. And I'm going to put a Swarovski crystal in the center of this little daisy when it's all dry and attached and everything's finished and ready to roll on our 3D little mixed media piece. And don't forget to get in between the petals and the back of the petals because people are going to see that if they pick up your piece, which of course these the kinds of things with texture they always want to and we'll make sure all the edges are covered be careful so you don't break your little petals because they are delicate it is polymer clay which is why it's so great that you can mount them on this little 4 by 4 canvas and there we go we have a little peach daisy and I am going to once again sprinkle a little glitter on that just because I like sparkle so I'm going to put some loose glitter on that. Now you can see sparkly loose glitter little daisy. Let that dry and I have another one that is a sunflower daisy combo. See the daisy in the middle, sunflower on the outside and I'm going to do the peach on the sunflower but the periwinkle on the daisy at the top center. So they kind of are color coordinated with the base of my canvas and with each other. Now if you have other paints sitting around like I mentioned before in your craft closet or basket drawer wherever you keep your craft elements left over from anything, from uh, another kit, uh, painting models, I don't really care what it was, it paints paint, right? And if you love the color, and you think it makes a great flower, use it. Polymer clay will pretty much take any kind of paint. Okay, so there's the outside. Now we'll do the inside top and we'll make that element periwinkle. I'm going to try not to smear it too much on the bottom of the other one, but I'm not that picky. I think distressed looks cool. And the only distressor is me putting it on there. So there we go. So there is our sunflower periwinkle. I'll put a little bit of glitter on that. And we have a really nice daisy sunflower combo. Now we have our leaves and I curled those. I cut them and I curled them pinching the back. See that little pinch right there? Just like so. In order to give it some realistic looking structure and of course I'm going to paint my leaves leaf green. So, whoops, sorry. Slippery fingers. Slippery when wet. Um, I'm going to paint that again. Don't forget the back and even the edges because you don't want white clay showing through. It kind of ruins the whole idea. And pretty soon you're going to have a little piece that looks like a place where, you know, it's like a little pixie wonderland. And you can also hit that with glitter if you choose. I'm going to go ahead and get this other leaf. And don't forget to paint your bead bases if you're going to make those little bead stacks. So on the back, and there's our leaves, and I'm going to go ahead and put glitter on that just because we're in a rut of glitter, so we might as well make a match. Okay, now bead bases, like I showed you, for large beads and small bead stacks, and you just want to paint those so that they aren't white. They can be any color, but they need not be white. So I'm going to go ahead and put periwinkle on there. Put 
and periwinkle on there. And we should be ready to start assembling our little bit here. You can buy two kinds of kits, either small or medium. That refers to the size of the cutter. You're going to get three cutters, irregardless, in your kit. You're going to get one for making leaves, one for making sunflowers, and one for making daisies. Believe it or not, this is the medium daisy, this is the medium sunflower, and this is the medium rose leaf. You're, you can choose medium or small, all the same cutters, just a smaller size. That means you can put more flowers and more elements on your 4x4 four four, um, base because they're smaller, they don't take up all the space. <laughs>